Welcome to Daily Living with Father Chapin, where we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Yes, my friend, that is what we do. Sometimes the Bible can be a bit confusing, so we bust it down like a fraction. We're asking questions, questions like, hey, what do these Gospels have to do with me? That's what I want to know. How can I take these Gospels that come to me each and every week and apply them into my daily living so that I can become a reflection of God's love to a world, let's face it, don't know God for sure, and definitely is in deep need of more love, don't you think? I mean, take a look around, my friend. There's a lot of bad news out there. How can I take the good news of Jesus Christ and apply it into my daily living so that I can become, well, a light in that darkness? I want to be a tool in the hand of God, making present His kingdom. Not someday, but today and every day, and that's what this show is all about. And I'm so glad you could join us today. Oh, we got a good one. But what He said before we get into it, let us quiet our minds. Let us breathe. You know, how often do we run here and run there and, and do this and do that and take a picture, send it to your friend? I mean, how often do we just stop and say, what am I doing? Where am I going? The good news about the good news is that God wants to lead you like the quiet voice inside of you, like one of those GPS systems in the car. You know, when you're driving and that lady says, I want you to take a right in 100 yards. You know, that lady, who is that lady? Why am I listening to that lady? Maybe I go left instead of right. Thing about the GPS system is it will reroute you to your destination. My friend, there are times in life when we take a wrong turn. And the quiet voice will reroute us. But the thing about the quiet voice is it's quiet. And it will not raise itself up to compete with the cacophony of all the voices of this world. One very powerful way that God wants to speak to us is through His Word. So what do you say we get into it right now? The question is, He's ready to talk to you. Are you ready to listen? We're going to school, my friend. Are you ready to be the student? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged Him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The gospel of the Lord. And my friend, what a gospel it is. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back. And we're going to talk about this gospel. Oh, and it's a good one. Calling the kids. We're going to learn something today here as we consider God's word and how it is that we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Thank you for watching the Daily Living Show with Father Chapin. It's a pleasure to be able to come into your home each week to share the good news. If you feel you are being fed by this ministry and would like to support our broadcast, please consider sending a check to Daily Living, 181 St. Brendan Way, Elkins, West Virginia, 26241. You can also go to the Daily Living website to donate on PayPal. Thank you for watching Daily Living, and we appreciate your support. Welcome back to Daily Living. So today we continue our journey through the Gospel of Mark. And believe it or not, my friends, we are still in the first chapter. Now, if you were with us last week, we were talking about the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. And our gospel last week ended with, So he went into the synagogue, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. So today our gospel picks up exactly where we left off last week. Jesus is on a mission. He is preaching. He is driving out demons. And a leper comes up on him, kneels down, 
begs him, says, if you wish, you can make me clean. So this leper comes to Jesus. Now, leprosy was a huge issue for the nation of Israel. The book of Leviticus has no less than 59 verses that deal exclusively with how to handle the issue of leprosy. And out of all those verses, not a word is mentioned about compassion, hope, or redemption. All of those verses discuss how the nation of Israel can protect itself from this curse known as leprosy. Today we call it Hansen disease. It begins with a small rash or lesion, usually on the face or the head, but it begins to spread. In time, it, it attacks the nervous system, the nerve endings, to the point where the one who has leprosy loses all ability to feel. Which is kind of how sin is, don't you think? But anyway, we're jumping ahead. What happens is when, when, when you lose your ability to feel, you can injure yourself. A, a person with full-blown leprosy can stick their hand in a fire and not feel anything. It's an awful disease. It attacks the very marrow of the bone, causing the bones to disintegrate, fingers and arms to retract, callous nubs to take their place. Not only is it dangerous because it's extremely contagious, you can just breathe the bacteria of another person who has the disease and get it, or you can simply handle their clothing or possessions of somebody who has it. Some historians say it's the first disease ever identified coming out of the nation of Egypt. In fact, they say they found mummies that still have active leprosy upon examination. So like I said, it's a huge issue. The book of Leviticus states that if one contracts leprosy, they are to be put out of the camp. Very specific as to how to handle it. If, if one is found with a lesion or some kind of rash, they are to appear before the priest. And through a series of examination, the priest determines whether it might be something less serious, such as eczema or dried skin or a rash, something like that. But if it's leprosy, they are to be pronounced unclean. The clothes are to be torn as a sign of their affliction, and they are left to be living alone outside of the camp. They were required to cover their mouth if anybody approaches and say, unclean, unclean. A rabbi of that date wrote that a leper upwind could come no closer than six feet, downwind 150 feet. Josephus wrote that lepers were a living corpse. So this is, this is awful. It's an awful, awful and dangerous disease. But it was also seen as a curse from God, right? God don't like you if you have leprosy. So you're forbidden to go to the synagogue. You're separated from your family and friends. The only people you can associate with were other lepers. Remember the 10 lepers in the 17th chapter of Luke standing out in front of the city gate? Well, yeah, they could talk to each other, but they're separated from everyone else. They're not allowed to go into the city, and so they're forced to stand at the city gate and beg for their survival. So... Our gospel says that this leper comes to Jesus, which that's just shocking. That's not supposed to happen. I'm telling you what, that crowd must have been shocked when they realized they had a leper in their midst. Not just shocked, I would say horrified. Mosaic law makes it very clear he's not supposed to be there. But Jesus, moved with pity, stretches out his hand, touches him, and says, I do will it. Be made clean, and the leprosy leaves him immediately, which must have just been shocking, really. So, at first glance, seems like a pretty straightforward story. Leper appears, Jesus takes compassion, Jesus heals the leper, just another one of those healing stories. But hold on there, Sparky, not so fast. All is not what it seems. There's a, there's a few problems with this text. Some of the translations can be a bit difficult. Move with pity. He stretched out his hand, touched him, says, I do will it be made clean. So right away, Houston, we got a problem. Levitical law makes it very clear. You can't touch a leper. You can't do that. You don't touch a leper because if you do, then you yourself are made unclean. And even if you do it by accident, 
which I'm sure this panicked crowd's trying to figure out whether that happened to them about now. You are in need of a ritual cleansing, a ritual bath. You got to burn your clothes that you are wearing. And God forbid if a rash appears on you, you got to go to the priest for an examination. So there was great hysteria around leprosy. I remember years ago, a little boy named Ryan White contracted HIV through a blood transfusion. And even though science has well documented the fact that you can't contract HIV through casual contact, there was great hysteria, great panic surrounding that situation. Angry parents were screaming at the school board for allowing him to attend school. He was shunned from his community. My friends, we have seen this type of hysteria in our own time. But in the ancient world, can you imagine the fear of being exposed? So the fact that Jesus purposefully stretches out his hand and touches this leper. Like I said, that's totally against Levitical law. You can't touch a leper. But we got another problem. And that's the problem with translation. It could be even a bigger problem, or at least an issue, right? It says he was moved with pity. But here's a rub. There are several older manuscripts that say he was moved with anger. In fact, this word can can mean both anger or pity. We see the same word in the ninth chapter of Mark. Remember when Jesus was coming off the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John? If you recall, immediately after he came off of that mountaintop experience, he ran into what? A problem, which is kind of like life when you think about it. One minute you're on top of the mountain, the next minute you're in the valley. But anyway, he comes down the mountain and he runs into this demon-possessed boy convulsing. And the disciples, they can't help. They can't heal him. And this is where we see the same word because Jesus snorts, you unbelieving generation. How long must I endure you? Bring the boy to me. So there is a bit of a translation question about this word because like I said, it could mean either anger or pity depending on the context. But there's no doubt that the word used in the, in the 43rd verse of this gospel, then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. That Greek word sternly, which is snorted with great distaste or anger, much like a horse, okay? It's used, Mark, only this other one time, but it's also used in our gospel today. So, well, pardon me, the other time that this word, as far as dismissing him sternly, was used was when, remember that woman anointed Jesus with that perfume that was so expensive, and the disciples were scolding her because they said that she was wasting money? It's the same word. So he, let's just say for discussion's sake that he is angry. Why? Why would he be angry with this leper? I mean, he healed him after all. If he was so incensed about him being there, then why would he have stretched out his hand and touched him? I mean, nobody made him do that. Says he dismissed him at once. Threw him out. Cast him out. Same word that was used a couple weeks back in Capernaum when he cast out that demon. So, I don't understand what's going on here. This is State of the Living. I'm Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back and we're going to try to answer that question and maybe a few other questions here as we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Thank you for watching The Daily Living Show with Father Chapin. It's a pleasure to be able to come into your home each week to share the good news. If you feel you are being fed by this ministry and would like to support our broadcast, please consider sending a check to Daily Living, 181 St. Brendan Way, Elkins, West Virginia, 26241. You can also go to the Daily Living website to donate on PayPal. Thank you for watching Daily Living, and we appreciate your support. Welcome back to Daily Living. So let's put ourselves in this scene. This leper appears to Jesus, falls to his knees, and begs him. He says, if you wish, you can make me clean. Now, of course, by now, the reputation of Jesus as a healer has got to be pretty well known. Jesus responds by reaching out his hand, touching the leper, thus breaking Levitical law, defiling himself. And it says that the leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Now, 
the Gospel of Luke records the same story, but gives us a little more detail. He says that this guy, it wasn't a mild case. He had a bad. We're not just talking about a rash going away. We're talking about fingers being restored. We're talking about arms starting to work again. It must have been phenomenal. I think about all those people in the crowd when they saw this. I imagine they went from absolute horror and disdain when they realized the leper was there to utter shock and amazement when they saw this healing. And while one would think this would be a high point for Jesus, instead it's, it seems that Jesus gets angry, shakes his head, and throws the leper out, demands that he tell no one how he came to be healed. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. So let's break that down. Offer for Moses what he prescribed, your cleansing, right? What is that? Well, the book of Leviticus is very specific about what needs to happen here. And it's a ritual cleansing, and it's intense. Number one. He is to present himself to the priest for examination and to be examined from head to toe. And he is to bring two birds. One is to be sacrificed right away, while the other bird is to be dipped in water, mixed with cedar wood, scarlet, hyssop, and sprinkled seven times over the leper. And then that bird is to be let free. Then the man is to go under careful examination, whole body and then to be shaved completely. I'm talking head, beard, eyebrows, everything. And after seven days, he is to be examined again and then shaved again. Well, actually shaved first and then examined. Let me tell you, this is a big deal. Whole thing took about 10 days, the whole process. And he said, so I want you to go do that and it'll be proof enough for them. What exactly does he mean here? What exactly would that prove? Well, number one, it proves that he's clean, so he can be restored to his family. It proves that he can return to the synagogue and, and praise God for the great miracle that has happened in his life. But it's proof of something else as well. Leprosy still persists in our world today. Like I said, we call it Hansen's disease. And modern science has, has made great strides as how to treat this disease. Medications have been developed how to manage the symptoms. But they have not come up with a drug, even to this day, that can restore the damage that leprosy causes. No one's figured out a way to have fingers grow back. So when Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest, and that'll be proof for them, nobody at this point had ever been cured from leprosy like that. So the other thing that it proves is that only someone who has the power and authority of God could be capable of doing such a thing. And you would think, that this guy who just received this incredible miracle would do exactly what Jesus tells him to do. But no, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. Jesus says, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest. A guy doesn't do that. He skips that. No. He, he goes out and he begins to publicize the whole matter. In other words, he tells everybody. And it goes on to say that he spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places. And people kept coming to him from everywhere. Wow. Um, why, we're talking, maybe he's angry. Why would he be so angry? And I got a theory. I think that the reason that he could be very angry at this point is because he sees Satan's fingerprints all over this situation. I mean, as soon as the leper walks up, he saw right through it. Not that the leper is a demoniac, no. But I believe that the reason that Jesus could be very angry here is that he sees Satan and what he's up to. And he's using the situation to get everybody to focus in on the miracle of the healing, right? Which is the sizzle, not the steak, my friend, because the steak is the good news. Sure, we can get a healing, 
But in the end, we're going to die of something. The good news is the promise of eternal life, which has everything to do with that. But back to our leper. He's got this terrible disease. There's no cure. There's no hope. But he hears about this miracle worker, Jesus, someone who can heal. And in great desperation, he goes and he seeks him out. And against all odds, he's totally restored. And when Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest, he skips all that. He just goes home to his family, bragging about the miracle. I tell you what, as a priest, I have seen many miracles in people's lives. I've heard many miracle stories, whether it comes to a horrible accident that maybe they should have died, but they didn't, or maybe some disease that goes into remission. I mean, there's countless variations, but you know what so many of them have in common? So many times it, it doesn't really change the person really much at all. I mean, in the beginning, of course, they're very excited. It might inspire some spiritual curiosity. They might come back to church for a while and talk about it all the time. But then over time, it kind of fades, talk about it less. And then in time, it's just, well, one of those things that just happened. It doesn't really change them all that much. And I remember when we began this whole thing, we were talking about Jesus was going into different villages, preaching the good news, right? casting out demons. He said, for this purpose, I have come. The good news, the good news that will save your soul and restore you for eternity. The good news that will help you fight the prince of this world. The good news that will restore you to a personal relationship with the God who created you. The good news of eternal life. And the devil can't stop that, my friend, but he certainly can get in the way and cause problems. It says it was impossible for him to enter a town freely, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. And let me tell you, my friend, they weren't coming for the good news. Mm -mm, no way. They were coming for a healing. Everybody wants a miracle. And not much has changed, my friend. It always seems to take a crisis. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's some serious accident. But in the end, it is pain that will drive so many of us to our knees for the first time. And we cry out, oh God, oh God, oh God, please, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. But hear me when I say, my friend, the scriptures are not a manual on how to get a healing. The scriptures are Jesus coming to teach us how to be a human being and to find him in the midst of our daily living so that he can lead us home. He said, flat out, I'm not of this world, which means those who stand in my shadow are not of this world. And we're all simply trying to find our way home. He remained outside in deserted places. Meanwhile, the leper continued and returned to his community and his family. Did you notice how Jesus trades places with the leper? The leper who had been in deserted places is now restored to his family and his community. Meanwhile, Jesus is forced out of the gate and into deserted places. Not much change, my friend. Every time I hear some knucklehead on TV talking about, well, you know, we, can, we need to keep the separation between church and state. I think about this gospel. Look at our college campuses today. Everything under the sun is welcome. But you best not bring up no Jesus. Because like the leper, he's offensive. He stays outside the gate, my friend. Leprosy is a terminal disease. That is true. But then again, you know what else is? Life. Life is a terminal disease, and the leprosy of sin ever since the Garden of Eden is numbing us and continues to numb us till after a while we fall under its power and eventually we feel nothing. My friends, Jesus traded places with the leper in our gospel today, but you know who also he traded places with? You. As he hung on that cross, bleeding and dying, he was covered with the stench and decay of sin. Your sins, my sins, the sins of the world, he traded places with us. And you know, what I think in the end must be so frustrating and so hard for Jesus is the fact that 
So many people whom he died for cannot or will not accept his gift of eternal healing. What about you? He's standing right here, right now. Won't you receive his healing today? Won't you allow him to guide you through this life and carry you to your heavenly home? You know, every day in this country, somebody does something nice for somebody else. Today, why don't you let that somebody be you? This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. Hope you can come back next week and we'll do it again. Until then, I hope you let God live in your life. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.